Vancouver straight from Truffaut and Farayild, and yes, I'm Enrique from Cabin Stories. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, so let's get started with um, with Cabin Stories, ESL. Um, what a lot of fun that that film is. Um, uh, can you tell us about how was a did it start an improv or or how, how did you guys put that all together? Sure. So I uh, I made that um, short with my sketch comedy group Private Street, and we've been together uh, this last Monday's uh, nine years together, and. Um, before the pandemic, obviously, uh, we were doing a lot of live shows. Uh, but in, two, in 2019, we just kind of got away from performing live and we still wanted to get together and do something. So we rented a cabin and we gave ourselves a month and we wrote a bunch of sketches. And then we shot uh, seven sketches in a weekend and then we edited them all together. And the one that you guys saw today was uh, Look at This Place. Uh, and that was pitched by David Brown, who's a member of Private Street as well. Okay, cool. So, so, um, so did, did David write it or do you, how do you, what's your writing process? Yeah. So usually we'll come in with pitches and, uh, then we'll be like, yeah, we like this one. We'll like that one. And then we'll come back again the next week. And then the, the, the one that the person that pitched it, will get like a first pass on it and then he'll read it or she'll read it. And then, uh, yeah, then we kind of collaborate on it and then we kind of, uh, finish up the writing together. So, but yeah, that was David Brown's idea. That was his pitch. Very cool. And so I feel like so much change from the script to the shooting to the editing. <laughs> um, so yeah, it was it was fun to be in that process. I was going to ask when it gets all demonic. Was that something that was planned, or did you find that in the in the in the editing? Well, the the I think the original sketch was like three pages long, and when we started shooting it, it was just going to be it was going to be way too much. So yeah, David had to f kind of find a way to like speed it up and wrap it up at the end and yeah that was kind of the tool that he used cool cool well so much fun we're going to see another one of yours in in shirts block two from this same series so um yeah tomorrow so, 2 p.m tomorrow yes um thank you so much yes so thank um, you so much thanks for having us yeah um so tamina um, a woman um what a powerful film it, I, the, your film literally made me cry today i was just like oh my god that moment when 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 the husband actually thanks her is just like so touching um can you tell us the genesis of this story um yeah well first of all thank you <laughs> um uh the genesis of the story i think i was just inspired by um by stories of women in my country but also just everywhere around the world and this like universal idea of how much women really do for do do for us and um how little sometimes uh, we give them credit for it for their work and for their dedications to families and their work and everything around them and just kind of like having to be this glue that keeps keeps things together and unfortunately sometimes it just kind of goes by unnoticed and they don't get the like i said the credit and the appreciation that they deserve yeah, yeah. So, um, in terms of the specific story, um, uh, did you did you workshop it with your actors? It's, the the performances are, are just just so lovely. Um, how, how did you create this whole world? Um, I didn't actually. We didn't really have much time to workshop or even rehearse, for that matter. I was lucky enough to know uh, the actor that was starring opposite me. He was he's a good friend of mine, so and he I've worked with him before, so it kind of came naturally. But it did work as like um, there was more room for kind of. Uh, not improvising, but for taking out dialogue or for allowing it to sit there a little bit or change it up. I did want it to be as real as possible. I do love, um, the, you know, the style of it in that way, like the social realism and of it. So um, there wasn't much workshopping going on, but we did work on the script. I did show the script to a couple of my friends and the people that I trust. And we kind of thought of how do we make it more, um, more subtle, I guess, with each, with each uh, workshop. Oh, nice, nice. So, and you shot this in Azerbaijan, yeah? Yes, Azerbaijan, yeah. in Baku. So what, what's it like uh, shooting independently in, in, in that country? It's very, obviously it's very different from anywhere else. And there's pluses, there's good things about that and the bad things. The good things is that it is, 
uh, cheaper, much cheaper than shooting in the United States. But then there's also the, you know, the things that are not so great is that because there aren't any unions or there aren't any uh, strict rules, sometimes people take advantage of it or it, it becomes a little bit of a, either a um, not a very professional environment or it can become a little bit too people take advantage of that so it's it, it can go both ways but the good thing about it that it is much easier in, in many ways to find uh, the resources without spending all of your budget and finding the right group of people because it is a small community so people kind of know each other and there's a little it's easier to reach out to people and people are usually available last minute more so than here because there's less there's less filming going on there Right, right. And uh, I, I imagine this is somewhat of a traditional society. Is, is, it, um, is it harder for women to, to work there? Are they expected to, to be? Um, it, it is a very secular society. It's, it's very uh, progressive in many ways. It's modern. Women do work a lot. So in the city, I am from the city, so the capital. If you go outside the cities, obviously, it's very different. But in the city, women do tend to work and there's a lot of independence. But I would say it's not even so much a, a religious or just a conservative country. I just think it comes from the society and there's still that like male dominated mentality and there's still some societal expectations that get in the way. So it's on paper, it's not really that way. There's no restrictions, you know, women are allowed to do whatever the men are allowed to do. But I think internally, there's a lot of blocks that are keeping these women still kind of uh, on the background of men. Great, great. Well, yeah. thanks, thanks so much for joining us and sharing, yeah. sharing your- Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's move on to, to Eleanor and, and follow me. Um, yeah, so um, when we talked on the phone, you told me a little bit about the backstory of this film, which kind of gives it a whole different context. But um, but um, I, I guess um, it's so um, so powerful the way you kind of kind of layer these two different stories and, and the emotions that are going going on with them. Is this typical of your work, and or, and how did you conceptualize it originally? Yeah, um, yeah, I think it's. Um, you can show the video, I think, because it's like I have two windows open, if you notice. Yeah, you um, that, yeah. yeah. Um, because, um, so usually um, in my, um, yeah, in other works I've done, in other films I've done, uh, it is also the same. Um, this um, tension between the, the dialogue and the picture um, and playing with voiceover is really like something I, I um, I really like to experience and to and to play with. It's like a playground for me. Like I really like to to detach these two um, um, these two things um, here as well. Um, it was really um, um, powerful for me. I think to 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 let this uh, young man uh, go to this to this journey um, and and. And hearing this other person in the car um, talk, reflecting his own um, his own emotions, it was it uh, it, it felt uh, the right way uh, to do that and to talk about um, about that conflict that he's going through. Um, I think it it was uh, it was done in a point in my life when I had uh, um, like I was in the same position when I had to, when, when you just sometimes have to choose. Um, and, and it's very difficult, I think also in the film until the very last minute, it's very difficult for the, for this main character, for this boy to, to choose really. And, and um, so, yeah, I really like this, um, um, yeah, this thing going on there too as well yeah 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 so um and, and can can you tell us a little bit about your 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 lead actors um yeah uh he was a student of mine uh he was 18 years old when when we shot it um i i was teaching film in high school and I was really intrigued by this boy, I have to say. I almost um, intentionally like wrote a script that he can play um, uh, in this film. I had, I had a, I, I knew from the beginning I'm, I'm going to work with him. He's not an actor or anything, uh, but he was really 
Um, I mean, there is something in his face, there is something in his expressions. He's really, um, he's really intriguing. Uh, so I worked with him a lot on rehearsals and um, I knew that he was kind of admiring this um, young Israeli uh, singer songwriter, which is the, the, the lead actress that plays next to him in the film. She's much older than him. I mean, he's 18, she was 32 when we shot it or 31, but she plays like an 18 uh, years old uh, girl, like nothing. Uh, she, did, she does it beautifully. And, um, and he was, he was so, uh, like he had a crush on her. Like he was, he was obsessed with her. She's like, she's, she's really famous. And uh, so that was amazing to put them together in the film. We didn't do rehearsals because I really wanted to experience this moment that he sits with her for the first time in the car. And, 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 you know, this, he was, yeah, you could, you could really get this thing uh, going on like uh, for real. And it was, it was moving um, for him mainly. She was okay. Um, so it was, yeah, that was about these two characters. Cool. And um, so music plays such a big part in your film. How, how did you think about um, the use of music? Yeah, um, my uh, brilliant editor, uh, which I really like. Uh, he was the one suggesting the um, the the song for the opening um, sequence, um, um, which I uh, really like. And but I have to say that um, the, choosing the Faith No More song uh, was 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 much more easier. It's it was such. I, I liked to I, I I liked so much when I was a teenager to to when I just got my driver's lessons. Uh, I used to I, I remember I really remember like singing this song really. I mean I know it's called Just a Man, but I mean I was really also uh, <laughs> it really touched me also this song. Um, and I and I remember that and it was a problem with this kid because he didn't have a driver's license and he 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 doesn't know the the feeling of like driving in your car and screaming and and that was I think the hardest part in shooting this film like getting him to really to really sing to really scream because if you don't know the the feeling of driving in a car on a on a on a like high uh, uh, on a highway with the windows open and and screaming so it's really hard to fake it. <laughs> for him it was it was the hardest thing in the film you know like to to really to shout it out uh so we worked on it a lot it took me a lot of time on shooting and it was very expensive unfortunately but uh we made it and and yeah it's like um yeah i think that's all i have to say about that great great well thank you so much uh, it, it definitely paid off really such a beautiful film and so so happy to have Thank it you. here and, and to chat with you um eleanor and uh yeah so let's um let's move on to edgar Restrepo. um so uh but most of the filmmakers i get a chance to chat with uh, before the best five but i've never talked to you yet so it's really exciting to be able to to chat um and uh talk about this this also really stunning film um how did you first find out about the, these whole, or, or do you have a particular fascination with with uh, with bucks and, and and deer and their behavior? <laughs> Not really, but uh, at first we we went to a kind of um, a small visit of a forest, and we discovered with my brother uh, the um, all this uh, comportment of the of the deer, and that's where we start to think about at first a comedy which became a uh, more than a, something more tragic <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's funny that it started as a comedy that that, that kind of makes sense um so um so so what was it like working with your lead actor in terms of hit him i guess with both actors in terms of them becoming <laughs> sort of like interacting with animals or becoming like animals um Mm. Was that was that a, a whole process? Uh, it was in the process just at the beginning of the movie, in the the movie the car scene, where we 
really wanted them to be to shout to 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 act with um, with their bodies and and not to to talk too much so this was the the main scene where we tried to to get them to be like animals or at least to to try to have a animals conversations something like that mm -hmm. but after uh, the the third character so the the guy from the forest is more like he, he leads them to another kind of discussions i think another kind of way of seeing the forest and uh, so the communication change and they start to, to speak with each other a lot and um there is a kind of twist at this moment, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so, do you see this film as a sort of a metaphor for re relationships in general, or, or for maybe a, a specific, specific uh, thing that you or your brother experienced? Or I don't know if you want to answer that. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's inspired by some of our couple's life. I can, I can say. Yeah. Um, but um, but no, it's more like I don't think it's a metaphor. I think it's more like a real a real couple uh, going through some fantastical things, something like that. Oh, nice, nice. And so tell us also um, about the, the, the cinematography in this film is just breathtaking. Like, uh, tell us a little bit about how you approached that. Um, we approached that in one way more than others which were to select the good forest where we're going to shoot so i did a lot of um, of trips in burgundy to find the good one because it, this was the main um, the main work the, the this was the the most important thing for me and uh, after we work with a uh, um, an operator from uh, from la femis and we loved his work before, so so we we discussed a lot together to to have a really to have something really I don't know how to say it, but something good, and that we could uh, could outline the fantastical aspects of each each set. Yeah, yeah. So so was it was it all storyboarded? Uh, no. No. Okay. No. Some some parts were, but not everything. Cool, cool. Well, well, amazing, amazing work. Thank you so much for, for talking Thank to us you. about it. And uh, yes, I'd, I'd love to just wrap it up by going through and finding out what you all are, are, are going to be up to next. Um, if you want to start us off, yes, Sal. Um, so we, we are going to do another movie, but a more political one, I think. Uh, and uh, it will be based on a novel by uh, uh, Portuguese also, and uh, it will be shoot if everything is fine next uh, next year. I think in March or something like that. Cool. And I, actually, we also got a question from the audience. If you can also tell us, uh, they're asking us, who are your filmmaker inspirations? If you want to share that. Um. For this specific movie, we had uh, in mind the, the, the shout by uh, Klovinowski with this old story about the sound. And, and um, I also thought a lot about uh, Le Mépris of Godard because there is something in the movie that cannot be said, but this is the main thing that happened. Right. Oh, nice. Nice. Uh, yeah. Um, how about you, Yesel? Um, any, any filmmaking inspirations and, uh, and, and what are you up to next? Uh, I guess film, filmmaking inspirations, um, really the editing for uh, Look at This Place is very similar to um, the editing that you would see in Tim Robinson's I Think You Should Leave. Uh, it's on Netflix. Uh, also Key and Peele, we're big fans of Key and Peele, um, Monty Python, uh, Tim and Eric, uh, awesome show, great job. Those are all kind of our, uh, we have many influences, but just to name a few, I would say those are kind of uh, groups that we love and try to do stuff like. 
And uh, what's coming up next? Uh, well, Cabin Stories got into another festival, so uh, that will be in November. Um, but in terms of projects, yeah, we're just writing the next thing. We don't know what it is yet, but uh, hopefully like a full narrative, not sketches. That's what we'd like to do, like a full short film around 20 minutes. That's, uh, that's really what we'll look to. Cool, cool. Let's go to mention Tim and Eric. We have uh, one of our films has, uh, this is starring uh, Eric Wareheim. So, uh, awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what about you, uh, uh, Tamina? Did, do, what's your, um, what, what, do you have any specific inspirations and what is your next project? Yeah, I would say my inspirations are the Darden brothers, Ken Loach, Andrea Arnold, uh, you know, all uh, filmmaker social realism. Uh, my next project, writing a feature right now, hopefully if everything goes well, I'll make it by next year. Also in Azerbaijan, deals with similar subjects. So that's the plan. We'll see. Great, great, yeah. great. And, uh, and Eleanor, how about you? Um, so uh, my next uh, project is also a short film and uh, it's going to be, I'm going to shoot it in one month from now, actually. Um, actually, uh, Israel is going to uh, another lockdown as of tomorrow. Mm. So uh, push me luck with the pre-production. <laughs> <laughs> Super. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm going to shoot it in one month from now anyway, because uh, I'm, 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 I'm very pregnant and uh, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be less pregnant uh, after that. So I have to shoot it one way or another. Uh, it's another short and it's going to be uh, fiction. And uh, yeah, and I'm very happy about it. Um, inspirations, uh, Lucrecia Martel um, from, from Argentina. Um, um, Sofia Coppola, I really like, um, really inspired. I, th I thought about her in this movie specifically. Um, yeah, these two things come in mind uh, in this uh, specific, uh, yeah, I also wanted to say Andrea Arnold um, and yeah, this is what Great. comes to mind now. Cool. Um... Oh yeah, we have one more question. Uh, oh, we had a question about for Kiko Saints. Unfortunately, uh, Manuel's not with us. But um, uh, is is Cabin Stories online anywhere? Can can people watch it online? Uh, it's not online yet, but it should be available soon. So uh, yeah, keep your eyes yeah. out for that soon. Okay, cool. Well, thank you all so much for being with us and sharing your films. Um, it's been lovely chatting with you. And, uh, and that's the end of our uh, Q&A for Short Spot One. Please come back for more Short Spots. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good job, everyone. <laughs>